You're listening to episode 158 of Lifestyle Locker Radio with David Toman. Hi, I'm Dr. Josh Hant, and welcome to Lifestyle Locker Radio, where we help you create an awesome life and lifestyle. From nutrition to fitness, mindfulness to peak performance, and relationships to money mindset, we bring you on an amazing journey to help you unleash your human potential. So here's a little bit about our guest today. David Toman's journey with nootropic supplements began when he was diagnosed with adult ADD. After years of buying self-help books, being passed over for promotions, and even suffering depression over his inability to focus, Ritalin helped turn his life and career around. But a few short years later, David found himself in the ER with a laundry list of symptoms. Neurologists tested him for early onset Alzheimer's, which came back negative. Not only was David struggling with focus again, but now he was suffering from complete memory loss, chronic fatigue, depression, and his business and marriage were in deep trouble. Fighting for his life, David again turned to nootropic supplements. With a methodically researched regimen of supplements and lifestyle changes, he was able not only to recover from, but get his brain working better than ever before. After experiencing firsthand what nootropic supplements were capable of, David founded nootropicexperts.com and wrote two books, Secrets of the Optimized Brain and Head First. So here is our guest today, David Toman. Hey everyone, welcome back to Lifestyle Locker Radio. We have a really awesome guest today about a topic that I'm learning more and more about. Uh, this is David, so welcome David. Hello. Hello, and the topic is nootropics. I know people say all say it all different ways, nootropics, nootropics, whatever it may be. Um, he's the expert, I'm not, so I'm gonna say whatever he says. So what, what do you say? I say nootropics. Nootropics, <laughs> perfect. Well, you are, you are in the South, aren't you? Well, I, there is a big debate about that, and there has been for years, and I figure that I'm the authority in this, and if I say it's nootropics, it's nootropics. <laughs> that, that's, I'm, I'm, I'll fly with that. That's great for me. So let's get into a little bit of your story before we get into what an actual nootropic is. Okay. I want to know, you know, this is not your first go-around in, in life, right, becoming an expert in nootropics. I, I got started in this, um, and I didn't even know what the word was, about 13 years ago. Okay. I, I had met this beautiful woman on North Miami Beach, and we ended up getting married. And um, she saw all of my adult life, I've had a problem with focus. Uh -huh. I've, I've lived, I've been to 45 countries. I've lived in Europe. I've lived in the Caribbean. I've lived in the United States and Canada. And everywhere that I was, I was typically an executive in some big corporation. Okay. And my yearly performance review was, David, you're a fantastic manager, you're a great executive, really good with people, but you've got to learn how to focus. And so I bought the books, and I tried to learn how to focus. I thought it was a moral fail. Mm. My new wife saw what was going on, and she said, go and see this psychiatrist I know in Palm Beach. This guy sat me down, and within 10 minutes, he says, you're adult ADD and PTSD. And so the PTSD part, it took me about 10 years to figure out where I think that came from. But the adult ADD, he put me on Ritalin. Of course. Right? As soon as I started taking Ritalin, Josh, it was like somebody turned the lights on in my brain. It was yeah. like, it was a miracle. It was all of a sudden I could focus for the first time in my adult life. And I went, whoa, <laughs> this is yeah. amazing. And then after about two years, I started growing tolerant to Ritalin. And... It wasn't working quite as well. And I kind of like started to panic because this was such a life changer for me. I'm going, there's no way I'm letting this one go. I got to find out what's going on here. So I did started doing a little bit of research and I found out what, how Ritalin works. And it turns out that Ritalin is a dopamine reuptake inhibitor. Uh -huh. And so basically it, it tells your, uh, it sends a message to your brain that you need to um, release more dopamine. My brain didn't have enough dopamine. And so I figured, okay, how do I solve that? And I found out that l tyrosine was a precursor to dopamine. So I started taking l tyrosine and Ritalin started working again. 
my brain was just starved of dopamine. Dopamine and, and I found out acetylcholine. So um, I started taking L-tyrosine and um, Alcar, acetyl L-carnitine, which is involved in the synthesis of acetylcholine and alpha GPC, which is a precursor to acetylcholine, and my brain started using Ritalin the way Ritalin was designed to be used, and it was working great. And then, uh, uh -oh. about, <laughs> and then about six years ago, yeah, six years ago, I just got really, really, really sick. And my wife took me to the ER because she thought I was having a heart attack. And it turns out that it wasn't my heart, it was, I was all of a sudden severely hypothyroid. And my body, it just was shutting down. Um, mm. And um, one of, so anyway, the, I tried, um, the first thing that prescribed was Synthroid, which is synthetic T4. Yep. And I was just getting sicker and sicker. But just to put this in perspective, my life was falling apart. I mean, my marriage was on the rocks. We were going broke because my business was failing. Um, I had completely lost my memory. And I was falling asleep at 2 o'clock in the afternoon. I was just chronic fatigue, constant pain with fibromyalgia. And so anyway, Synthroid didn't work. I found out about NS um natural desiccated thyroid, and I started getting my thyroid working so that it was getting the thyroid, my body was getting the thyroid hormones that it needed, but I still had no memory. So I went to two different neurologists and they both tested me for Alzheimer's. And both of them said, nope, it's not Alzheimer's, it's not dementia, we don't know what's wrong with you. And so I started doing my research again and I started trying different, different things. And by that time I learned the word nootropics and I just started experimenting and I put together a stack and it took me about two and a half years, but I finally got my brain working better than it ever has before in my adult life. And I turned my business around, I turned my marriage around and um, things are better now than they ever have been. Okay. So <laughs> it's just like one thing after another, after another. And, but it was, I had to save myself basically. Yeah. So let's just, I want to circle back for one little second. So, yeah. You're in the ER, like your health is getting, is falling apart. Your life is oh, falling yeah. apart. Um, what was, how did the Ritalin, did that start to disappear from your health or from your life? No, I kept on taking Ritalin because I knew that it worked. Um, but that wasn't the problem. Okay. There was just something went wrong with either, I I'm, I'm, have a sneaking suspicion it was, it's a problem with my pituitary gland. Uh huh because it affected testosterone as well. The pituitary gland is like, kind of like the, the master switch for mm -hmm. the major hormones in your body, including your thyroid hormones. For some reason, my body just wasn't producing um, thyroid hormones and I wasn't able to convert synthetic T4. But when I started giving it uh, um, natural desiccated thyroid, which is basically pig thyroid, uh -huh freeze dried pig thyroid, um, all of a sudden my body was starting to get everything that my thyroid normally was supposed to do on its own. That's free T4, free T3, and a couple of uh -huh. other um, molecules. And of course, I, I learned about iodine and how you need iodine to make thyroid hormones and selenium. And um, But yeah, it's... <laughs> crazy sounding right so it's so let's let's dive into this world of nootropics so you start to regain your health you start to regain your life and you start doing this research on you know this this fancy word nootropics yeah. so first what what is a nootropic like what, what does that even mean nootropic is basically any dietary supplement or substance that helps the brain okay that's essentially what it is um the word nootropic was coined by a guy named Dr. Cornelia Gergea back in 1973. He's the guy that invented paracetam. Okay. He was uh, a Romanian psychologist and chemist, and he invented paracetam in 1962 or 1963, I think in St. Petersburg. And about 10 years later, he was experimenting with this class of substances. It's basically, it's an analog of GABA. Okay. And he was, um, I would have to look at the research. I don't remember why he was working on it, but it was to fix something. 
Mm -hmm. um, but whatever it was, it didn't fix that. It turned out that it helped optimize a person's brain and they got better memory and better mood and they could think quicker. So when he coined the word nootropics, he came up with a definition of what a substance needed to be to be classified as a nootropic. Okay. And this is exactly what he said. It, it, a nootropic enhances memory and the ability to learn. Uh -huh. It assists brain function under disruptive conditions such as a lack of oxygen or electroconvulsive shock therapy. It protects the brain from chemical and physical toxins like um, barbiturates and anti-cholinergic drugs. It increases natural cognitive processes and it must be non-toxic to humans. Okay. Okay. So that's basically what an entropic is. Now, since I've been doing this research and I got deeper and deeper and deeper into it, there are a lot of people mistakenly, in my opinion, are calling smart drugs nootropics. And, in my, and they're, uh, I adamantly say they are not. Um, okay. Smart drugs are things like Ritalin and Adderall and Modafinil and possibly even microdosing LSD and that kind of thing. Those are smart drugs. Okay. Those are nootropics. Synth synthetically made. Made synthetic, in a lab. Yeah. Yeah, there are a handful of nootropics that are synthetics, like paracetam, that are considered nootropics, but they're completely harmless. Okay. And you don't need a prescription to get them. Okay. Right? So a nootropic, you don't need a prescription to get it. It's, for the most part, it's a natural substance. You can buy it at Whole Foods or on Amazon and some of them even your local um, supermarket. Oh, wow. Okay. So uh, as, you, as you're figuring this out, you mentioned the word stack. Uh, also, right? So I want to get into really what, you know, as you started to evolve and started to learn more and, and gain more information about nootropics and you became, you know, you became so uh, immersed in this stuff, right? Like so immersed, like you, so you took that deep dive, you went down the rabbit hole and started to learn everything you possibly can. Yeah. And I, like, that's, that's a really neat thing. I mean, that truly is what made you and makes you the expert in this type of field. And as you're going down and you're starting to find all these substances, like you said, you can find them in Whole Foods or you can find them in a grocery store, mm -hmm. which is to me, I'm like, huh, really? All I th I'm thinking stuff just like in a capsule. That's what I think when I think of a, of a nootropic. So as you started to build and figure this out, what is a stack and why, why would you have to do something like that? A stack is just a combination of individual substances that achieves a certain thing. Okay. Um, so if you, what you were talking about, it comes in a capsule. Sure. Yeah. It could be a pre-formulated stack. If you take a look, oh, on the, okay. if you take a look on the label, there could be five or six or 10 or 20 different ingredients okay. in, that, in that capsule. That's called the stack. One of the things that we've learned is that there, and we've been conditioned to believe this, but it's not true is there is no one pill solution. Hmm. There really isn't. If, you, if you're dealing with ADHD or you're dealing with depression or anxiety or PTSD or traumatic um, brain injury or OCD, uh -huh. one, one pill is not going to fix it. Yeah. It's not. Um, it's going to take more than one thing because, well, it just is. Once you start looking into what went wrong, um, there are several things that you need to do in order to repair what went wrong. So we can put together um, a stack for cognition and thinking faster. We can put a stack together for memory. We can put a stack together for anxiety and depression, one for energy and motivation, or one for brain repair and maintenance. Oh, interesting. Or, or you can put together a combination of one or two things from each of those categories for a stack that covers all the bases just to keep your brain healthy. Okay. Oh, that's really neat. You know, that's, that's what I was thinking. You know, I've, I've, I've tested a couple and you know, not, not lacking from certain, you know, I, I don't have PTSD or depression or anxiety or any of these things. Uh, I took it, you know, as an athlete, as someone that I would call like a high performer that, that does multiple things. And then I train my body insanely hard yep. on top of that. Mm -hmm. And when I would start taking, uh, and I, yeah, I can share it with you after, but when I started taking these, these enhancers, if you will, these brain enhancers, I mean, I felt like 
like the world went just like zoomed in and like, like, the, like I want to say tunnel vision. Like I was so focused on my daily activities, but also on my runs and my lifting. Holy cow. I was, it yeah. was just, it was so wild. And sometimes, these were all, you know, sure. I think sometimes amino acids or something like that, whatever they may have been in there. Yeah. Yep. And it's crazy. Some people have really, really profound reactions to these things if they get the right thing. Okay. Um, I do run into a lot of, because we have tens of thousands of people coming to the tropics expert. Um, there, every once, not every once in a while, frequently somebody will try something because somebody told them about it or they read about it uh -huh. someplace in Reader's Digest or in Men's Health or whatever. They tried something and nothing happened. Okay. And tropics don't work. <laughs> And go, no, that's not whatever you try just wasn't for you. Nootropics work. It's what are you trying to do? You need to find out what will support what you're trying to do. Mm. They really do work because we've got proof. Ten millions of people now are using nootropics around the world, whether they know whether they're called nootropics or not. And it's changing their life one way or another. So, yeah, they do work. You just have to find out what works for you. Yeah. Give, can you just give us some, like, uh, some of the stuff that we can find in Whole Foods or, like, a grocery store? Like, give us some things that are actually nootropics that people may have no idea, like, holy cow, I'm already eating this or taking this on a regular basis. I don't even know, didn't know that I'm helping myself. Well, vitamin B9. Okay. Folate. Folate is involved in the synthesis of dopamine, epinephrine, norepinephrine, and serotonin. It's involved in the synthesis of DNA, RNA, gene expression, amino acid synthesis, and myelin synthesis and repair in your brain. If you do not have vitamin B9, you're dead. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> um, so that's just like one example. You cannot make dopamine if you don't have vitamin B9 in your brain. I can use L-tyrosine with the expectation that I'm going to pr provide dopamine for this okay. AD brain. If I don't have enough folate in my brain, L-tyrosine is not going to synthesize, synthesize dopamine because it can't. It hasn't got the precursors and the cofactors that it needs to make dopamine. Okay. So how would someone actually figure out what they should, like what kind of stack I, we should have uh, the first that's a good question the first thing you want to ask yourself is what are you trying to fix okay or what are you trying to optimize like you're either trying to fix something or you're trying to optimize something yeah right so if you're trying to um, better cognition mm -hmm. by cognition I mean thinking you want to be able to think you want to be able to think on your feet okay think faster yeah sounds great to me all right. The way you do that is by putting together. A, so what, first of all, you've got to find out what's involved in cognition and thinking. And what you find out is that cognition includes thinking, knowing, short-term memory, working memory, and long-term memory, decision-making, and problem-solving. Okay? okay? All of these are different areas of their brain working together just so that you can think on your feet. And how you support this is with things like alpha GPC or CDB choline, which are precursors to the synthesis of acetylcholine. Okay. Acetylcholine is one of the major neurotransmitters in your in your body and your brain that it's involved in brain cell signaling. And it's involved in muscle movement. When you move your fingers, you're moving, you're using acetylcholine. Okay. Okay. So it helps um, improve your reaction time too. Cool. Very for, cool. For example, if you're in, into um, esports, yeah. Lion's mane mushroom. Lion's mane mushroom increases brain derived nootropic factor, which is involved in neurogenesis. And neurogenesis is a growth in the repair of neurons. So, your neurons, in order for you to create short term working and long term memory, your neurons have to communicate with each other in one fashion or another in, in order to do that those neurons you have to have enough neurons to 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 create a memory your brain actually has to rewire a new pathway in your brain to encode that memory so you're creating new neurons you can use lion's mane mushroom to help create those neurons so that it happens easier yeah and you can actually get that from a farmer's market yeah yeah or grow it yourself 
I just saw it last weekend. There you go. <laughs> the farmer's market, it's, it's, yeah. It's, and it's the coolest looking mushroom. Yeah, it looks like cauliflower almost, or brain. It's, they call it lion's mane because it looks like a lion's mane. Yeah. Um, pine bark extract. It comes from the French, uh, French maritime pine tree. And they found that it boosts um, brain blood flow or cerebral blood flow. So in order for you to think faster, your your blood needs to be flowing because your brain needs those nutrients and that oxygen for yeah. that to happen. Pine bark extract helps do that. And the B vitamins, vitamin B6, B9, and B12 are all involved in the synthesis of those neurotransmitters that you need and in gene expression, which is involved in cognition. Um, so that would be a stack right there for faster thinking. Faster thing. That's, alpha, that's, alpha, alpha GPC, lion's mane mushroom, pine bark extract, the B vitamins, and I would probably put in N acetyl L tyrosine, which is a version of L tyrosine to make dopamine. Okay, so you know, if, if this was me saying, oh, I'm going to make this stack, am I going to find a, a supplement of each of those? Or how, how would I do go about doing that? Um, you can, if you, probably when you're getting started, it's easier just to find the individual supplements. You find this You'll find all this on Nootropics Expert on my okay. website, right? Um, I've got a, a couple of posts. This one that I'm looking at is how to create the best nootropic stack. Okay. And so I've got suggestions for each one of those categories that I referred to earlier, faster thinking, memory, anxiety, and depression. Mm -hmm. If you're just getting started in this, I would take a look at this list and go out and buy the individual supplements. Okay. And in this case, you're just talking about a B vitamin complex. Yeah. Right? Alpha GPC, lion's mane, pine bark, and um, L tyrosine. There's four things. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you might be amazed at the difference that it makes in your brain if that's what you're trying to do. Okay. Okay. And is there, you know, I'm just, I'm, I'm being nerd for a second because I know I'm going to get these questions on my, on my website. Sure. Um, and I know they're going to be they're going to be resent redirected to you anyway. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if I go, I'm going to go to I go to the Whole Foods or my uh, supplement store, my uh, health food store. I'm buying these supplements. I know they come in different quantities and, and qualities. Is that something that's also yeah, that you that's, talk about? Yeah, it's super important because the dietary supplement industry is now a billion dollar industry, mm -hmm. like multi billion dollar industry, and um, especially in something like brain health and nootropics, everybody is jumping in and wants a part of it. So you've got a lot of shysters and I'm sure come producing crap. Um, you have to know what you're looking. For. First of all, you have to know what you're looking for, and then you have to know how to choose a quality a quality supplement. Okay, I've written a couple of articles on that too. The process that you go through, and it becomes automatic very quickly. But you have to know to look for a, um, a major brand. Yeah. Someone that's well known and well respected. Um, find out if they do testing on their supplements and are they willing to prove it? Well, if you ask them for a certificate of analysis, will they send it to you? Um, what's in that capsule? Is Are there any added, in, added ingredients or is it just L tyrosine? Okay. It might have three or four or five different. They, if you take a look at the vitamin label, you've got the, what's supposed to be in the capsule, and then other ingredients. Yeah, it's the other ingredients that always scares me, because mm. the other ingredients are some pretty nasty stuff. Yeah, and, and they they use it. Even the big um, respected manufacturers use it for things like to make sure that their machines don't plug up when they're trying to make capsules. So they use something for that. Yeah. They use something for color, right? Um, they use something that's anti-caking, so that this stuff doesn't turn. Like alpha GPC, if you don't, um, if you try to just use pure alpha GPC, it's going to turn into jello on you. It okay. Degrades really quickly, so they typically mix it with a filler. So you want to make sure that if they're using a filler, that it's a benign or natural filler, like like rice flour. Okay. And not magnesium dioxide. <laughs> yeah. Or titanium dioxide. Yeah. Or some, something that you don't recognize. 
Yeah. So those are the basics. Okay. And and I'm just thinking that, you know, if all those all the supplements I've tried I've tried and tested lots of different things over the yeah. years. Um just out of curiosity to see how I feel, how I function more importantly. And one of the wild supplements that I've taken, and I'm wondering if this fits in this category, I've taken like a full blend organic uh, CBD, like through a tube, like it looks like yep. like grass. Is that considered a nootropic? Absolutely. It is, okay, I, I, it's amazing. Yeah, yeah, CBD, Quite amazing. CBD oil is definitely a nootropic. Um, it's a natural substance, mm-hmm. um, and it's it's really really unique because the you've got cannabinoid receptors that only react to CBD. Uh huh. Exactly. That's all you do, so cool. right? <laughs> Yeah. So, but but you have to because they just legalize it here in the states, um, hemp anyway. Um, and you can buy it now in every state legally. Everybody is selling a CBD. Yeah. Supplement, right. So it's really you have to be very, very careful that you find something that's actually really CBD and that yes. it's pure. Mm-hmm. It hasn't got any additives. Yeah. In it, um, and that hopefully it's organic too, if at all it, possible. Oh, I agree, hundred percent. It's it's become a. a a hellhole of, of information and stuff that people just yeah, gonna, yeah. you can buy like at a, I saw I'm selling it on the street in Manhattan yesterday, like in little bags. I'm like, really? <laughs> like gummy bears. I'm like, really? Like they're all made like this. Yeah. Like people, I mean, people are being sucked into, into like the worst supplements and, and things like this. Yeah, and you know what? Um, I, and people have kind of like, um, they press me into helping them find good stuff. And I finally started developing relationships with some of these companies. Like I just developed a relationship, an affiliate relationship with Charlotte's Web, uh-huh. which is the pioneer, one of the premier CBD companies. I haven't got the links yet on the article, the review that I did for CBD oil. Yeah. I'm do that this week. But um, people are asking me this all the time. So I find something that I've, I've vetted, I've done the research on. I say, if you're going to buy it, buy this one. Yeah, I mean that's what it has to come down to at this point. I mean, I make it might make a little bit of commission if you do that, but at least you know you're getting something that's safe and that's going to work. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that's true of most supplements on the market now. Um, if you don't know what you're getting, a lot of times most people don't. You know, they'll pick the cheapest one. Right in your home state, in three or four years ago, the New York Attorney General um, went after Walgreens and uh, Target and a couple of other the big retailers that were selling private label supplements. Uh-huh. They tested these private label supplements that these guys were selling. And a lot of the times what was it said on the label was supposed to be in there wasn't in the capsule. There was things like wheatgrass, <laughs> oats, um, just other stuff. It was just like garbage. They were selling garbage, and they yeah. weren't they weren't testing their own stuff. Yeah. And it took somebody like the health department in New York to go after these people and take them to task for it. So, um, but you can't wait for somebody else to do that for you. You've got to do your own homework. Anyway. Exactly. That's 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 so true. And when it comes, to, I want to jump back into just the conversation on cognitive function and and the type of age range people could start actually using nootropics sure it, you know someone like myself who's got a very active lifestyle um it's a, it's a i'd say it's a good fit just based on my experience is that is that true yeah okay. um but the thing is is that everybody um can probably benefit with nootropics okay um because none of us were born with perfect anatomies, perfect brains. Okay. Every one of us has been subjected to living in the world that we're living in right now with polluted air, with food that doesn't provide the nutrients that we were, that we were getting 50 and 60 years ago. Um, and some of the other stuff that we consume, 
that's not doing good things to our body, like processed foods. Mm -hmm. um, we're damaging, one way or another, we're damage, damaging our body, whether we intend to or not. Nootropics can help reduce and repair some of that stuff. Yeah. And so then, you know, as, as we have, as this country alone in the U S we have like the, this aging country, you know, we're going to have like so many centenarians possibly in the next, you know, 20 years. Yeah. Um, and cognitive function we know is going to start tanking for most of these people because of what they've done with most of their lifestyle for most of their life, you know, they, they beat themselves up and then they're going to pray that everything's going to, you know, the medical system is going to take care of them and all it's going to do is going to help keep them alive while they're getting sicker and sicker. Yeah. So is, you know, for the, for cognitive function and I will, I want to put a link directly on, on the show notes on, on the article you have on this. So I think this is important for, you know, our baby boomers, the people that are hitting that 40, 50, 60, 70, 80 and beyond to start like paying attention to this now, the earlier, the better. Right. So we can actually get people to have like they can make better decisions if their brain is working better. That's that's <laughs> very true. I actually wrote a post a while ago called Best Nootropics for the Aging Brain. And what I mean by the aging brain is if you're, if you're past the age of 20. <laughs> OK, things start to stop working or you don't produce as much of it after the age of about 22 or 23. Okay. Um, and so, but it gets progressively worse each decade that you get older and you're talking about things like free radicals, uh -huh. um, synapses are breaking down, um, Alzheimer's and dementia and brain aging, Alzheimer's and dementia is something that start 20 or 30 years before you even start to see oh, yeah. symptoms start it. Um, um, cerebral circulation, um, the blood is not flowing as well as it used to, um, and neurotransmitter decline. You're after the age of about 35, um, your brain doesn't, pro starts, doesn't produce as much dopamine and as much as a, as a set of cooling, but dopamine is a particular problem. And every decade, um, your, your brain is producing 10% less dopamine so that by the time you're around 70 or 80, you're making a fraction of the dopamine that your brain had when mm -hmm. you were in your 20s. And worst case scenario is, in, is Parkinson's. Right? Yeah. But even if you don't get Parkinson's, you're still not enough dopamine means that your learning and your memory capacity has degraded. Mm -hmm. That's one of the simplest things that you can address by taking something like a B-complex um, vitamin and L-tyrosine. Okay. Um, and um, acetylcholine is another. Oh, the other problem with dopamine is we've got an en enzyme called monoamine oxidase, which is the enzyme that breaks down dopamine once your brain uses it, right? Okay. Because you wouldn't want, have a, want to have a buildup of dopamine so that you're more and more and more dopamine. You want the stuff that's used to get your, your system to get rid of it. Monoamine oxidase does that. The problem is that monoamine oxidase starts unnaturally increasing as you get older. So dopamine is decreasing, monoamine oxidase is increasing, so it makes the problem even worse. Huh, so you can use a natural supplement, supplement that inhibits monoamine, it's a natural monoamine oxidase inhibitor, or MAOI. You can actually get prescription MAOIs, so use them as antidepressants. Uh -huh. You can use natural ones to help um, quell the overproduction of mo mo monoamine oxidase and L tyrosine or N acetyl L tyrosine to boost L dopamine. Huh. So, so you know, is there is there a, a time limit? You know, when I start if I start taking, you know, something for cognitive function today, you know, it, do, does it stop working or is it something that I I can take the same quantity for a long time. Once you figure out the quantity that works for you, you can use it for the rest of your life. Okay. Okay. Because you think, where does most of this stuff come from in the first place? Where would be, we didn't always have dietary supplements. Yeah. In the tropics. All we had was food. So I actually just published, um, published a post on that yesterday that I'm supposed to send out an email on that today if I can get to it. <laughs> but um, the, our food supply isn't nearly what it was. Oh, totally not. Because, um, well, there's soil degradation um, and the use of 
um, genetic modified seeds mm -hmm. and our air quality, we've got twice the amount of carbon dioxide in the air now as we did 100 years ago. And one way or another, you're not getting the nutrients from your food that you used to get. That's where supplements come in. Yeah. Right? So, and so to answer your question, all you're doing is you're replacing the stuff that you normally would have, got, you should have gotten naturally, but you can't anymore. You just yeah. can't. Um, or you can't get enough of it. Yeah, I guess all you're, all you're doing is you're replacing that. Yeah, so you're supplementing your diet, you're right? You're supplementing you're your supplementing yeah. your diet, and yeah. you should be doing that, and you should be doing that for the rest of your life. And yeah. if you do it um, wisely and consciously, and um, just use common sense, um, you can prevent things like Alzheimer's and Parkinson's and vascular dementia, and those things don't need to happen. Yeah. So long as you're taking care of your body and your brain. Yeah, that's really cool. And, you know, and, and coming from, you know, my chiropractic background, the neurology is something we're very, very uh, involved with, you know, working with people's neurology all day, every day. And I'm really, I'm curious to, you know, I'm going to talk to, this will be my patients are going to hear this, this episode. And I'm curious to find out how well, because when we, when we're adjusting and working with the spine, all that information is going up and down to the brain consistently, right? Mm -hmm. That's those, those pathways are getting fired and wired. So if people are taking these nootropics, they're getting adjusted, their lifestyle is shifting, they're exercising more, whatever mm -hmm. it may be eating better foods. I mean, I, I think it's exponential. Like the change could be exponential at that point. It is exponential, but you can only repair your, your, your body and your brain to a certain point. Of course. Right. Because the key is balance. Uh -huh. Everything needs to be in balance. But once you rebuild your system, if you keep on taking this for maintenance, you, you maintain that new level of um, um, function and ability that yeah. you've managed to achieve because you've repaired things and you're supplying the raw materials that your body and your brain need to function yeah. properly. Yeah, very um, cool. Very if, cool. If, if you stop taking it all of a sudden for some reason, if somebody just picked you up and dropped you on a deserted island someplace, uh -huh. and you wouldn't re, re, you wouldn't degrade or regress back to where you started out because you've done a lot of repair, mm -hmm. you'll regress a little bit, right? Because your brain and your body is not getting what you were providing it. Yeah. It won't be as bad but don't expect that high level of performance if you all of a sudden stop taking this stuff. Yeah. So this is really neat. So I want to, I want to give our audience a, you want to give them the best place to get your info. Is it nootropicsexpert.com? Yeah. N O O tropics, like living in the tropics N O O tropicsexpert.com. I've got a YouTube channel that um, has become very, very popular. Just look for Nootropics. Go, go to YouTube and look for Nootropics Expert, and it'll pop up to the top of the search results. I've got over 100 videos on there now. Great. Um, if you go to Nootropics Expert, the first thing you should do is uh, provide your email address and download a free copy of Secrets of the Optimized Brain. The gift. It's the gift. It's the gift. It's about, I don't know, about 75 pages of just nootropic supplements. Um, there's around 70 detailed in there um, with brief descriptions on what they are, where they come from, why would we use them, and how much you should take, and um, things to watch out for, like side effects. Um, so those are the first things that you should do. Um, the other thing that you should do is I wrote a book called Head First. Um, the Complete Guide to Healing and Optimizing Your Brain. It's almost 600 pages. That's it? And Yeah. And <laughs> it's like the Bible. It's like a manual for your brain. Um, and it's the first one like it since 1992. The last one was published. Okay. So, yeah, this is a big deal. Um, head first. Um, get a copy of that. Um, I'm selling that every day. People are loving it. A doctor, and it's all in plain English too. Anybody can understand this. 
All Good. of it's backed by science. All of it's backed by thousands and thousands and thousands of clinical studies. So I'm backing up my stuff. But it's in plain English. So anybody can understand what we're talking about here. That's great. At, at any grade level. And I, I have non-English speakers buying it and they're using it. Great. But I, all, I also have doctors and naturopaths and buying it too to use in their practice so very cool so th the final question is going to be this you know if you had to tell our audience three things they could do tomorrow to help unleash their human potential just a little bit more what three things would they be clean up your diet um that's the first thing um that's one of the things that i had to do when um i was dealing with hypothyroid clean up your diet start eating better don't do what you can to avoid processed food um, and start just eating cleaner. Organic, if, ideally, if you can, but even if you can do organic, at least start eating cleaner. Um, get a good night's sleep. Do whatever you need to do to get a good night's sleep. I mean, that's a requirement. And if something's wrong or you want to boost something, find out about nootropics. Very cool. Food, sleep, and nootropics. Yep. Love it. Love it. So, David, this has been an awesome, awesome episode. I'm going to dive deeper into your, uh, into your content because this has really sparked an interest for me as an athlete, as a chiropractor, as, as a human being, really, because I, I want this thing up here, you know, knocking on my brain. I want this thing to work for a long time, you know, for the next hundred years or so at this point. And uh, I want to be sharp as a tack, sharp, you know, sharp as a tack, just like you, my goodness, it's, it's pretty amazing um, what you've been able to put in that brain and, and remember and have a conversation about. So I appreciate you being here. I'll send you a copy ahead first. How's that? All right. Love it. Awesome. Sounds great to me. <laughs> 600 pages. Sounds like a good, a good weekend read on a boat. It's not something that you want to read cover to cover. Yeah. But All right. it's, it's something that you'll keep dipping back into whenever you've got it. If you're going, huh, I wonder about this, that's when you go back to Oh, it. very cool. A, like almost a reference guide that that's, we can that's keep. Exact, that's exactly what that's it is. Perfect. There's, even, there's, there's a couple of chapters at the end on suggested nootropic stacks uh -huh. for various things like memory or depression or anxiety or ADD. Um, and the first chapter uh, is how I ended up doing this, my story. And the second chapter is how your brain works. Um, which is kind of like supporting evidence of why these nootropics work. Very cool. And I'm the excited. Rest, the rest of it is just nootropics. Yeah. Well, I'm going to dive deep because it's an interesting topic and it's, 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 it's health based. Fantastic. So it's right. It's, it's in my wheelhouse. I love it. So yep. David, appreciate it. Thank you so much. Uh, this is not the end of the conversation. This is the beginning. Indeed. I look forward to more. Fantastic. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. You're welcome. Hey everyone, I hope you did like that episode with David Toman and the topic of nootropics. Make sure you head over to his website, nootropicsexpert.com and download. You got to give him your email, but give him your email and you get a copy of Secrets of the Optimized Brain. And you can also go out and get a copy of his book called Head First. These are all on nootropics. He said this one's a biggie, you know, 600 pages. So you're going to spend some time reading this. So one last thing I want to ask, since we're giving you so much great content, if you are loving the content, please go over to iTunes or wherever you're listening to the podcast and give us that five-star review. It helps us get our message to more people and you're doing your part. So I do appreciate it. So wherever and whenever you're listening, have a great day, evening, or night, and we'll see you on the next episode of Lifestyle Locker Radio. Peace out.